Guys, myself, Chris Predator, OBE, hitting you with a quick one. Real talk, true season. Now, I'm just going to keep it 1,000 on in this one. And a lot of people ain't going to like it, but the reason why young people get involved in gangs is because they feel like they have no option. Young people are telling me right now, like Chris, if I'm under the age of 25, I'm automatically involved just by living in that area. Police don't do nothing about it. I've tried to speak to my mum. My mum talking about, go around them and walk around. Like, I don't understand how even but us as parents can sit there and just say, just don't be involved and just don't hang out with them and everything. It's a lot more harder than that. When you're growing up in the area, you are a victim or you are the person that's actually delivering and actually committing the crime. That's the, that's, that's the two-way street. So when you're being groomed and there's a video that a parent sent me and she was like, Chris, it's a young boy being groomed, being beaten up to be initiated into a gang. And I'm like, yeah, standard. That's light. Being beaten up into their gang, that's light. A lot of these kids are telling me that there have been sexual acts on them. They, you know what's there? They're being raped. Some of these kids are being told to go and stab people. Some of these people are being told to go and do robberies, commit fraud on their own card, send stuff to their mum's house and all the rest of it, taking them to country. So this is something that I'm looking at and I'm like, yeah, we've got to be real about it. It happens. And nine times out of ten, young people ain't really expressing what they're feeling because it's false evidence appearing real. That's not like in the sense of their fear. It's false evidence. They don't even know whether it's real or real reality now in the sense of is it fake if it's not real? Does he love me? Does he not love me? He's my brother though. He's my boy. Some, some, some of our young boys are fighting each other when they've grew up with each other. Imagine that. Imagine that you and your brethren used to go to secondary school and now all of a sudden he's trying to kill him. Parents are still talking to each other and everything. This is a society that we're raising in. And if you're going to sit there and say, I'm just going to lock my child away. I'm just going to tell my child not to get involved. It's easily said than done. Your child's automatically involved. So that's one thing. So we've got to understand that and be like, right, every time my child walks out on the street, wherever I live, he is representing that place. That borough, that area, that ends, regardless whether you like it or not. If he's under the age of 25 and he's not into something constructive, whether it's football, athletics, and he's just being able just to go to the shop or walking around the area... It's collateral damage, collateral damage to the streets. And every man knows that. And it's nine times out of 10, young people don't realise it until it's too late. We all seen it. They do a stabbing, they do a robbery, they get caught. They're sitting down in prison eight years and they're like, rah, why did I do that? They start realising, rah, my friend's not even my friend. I'm trying to call him up, he's not even answering. Certain man are linking, certain man's gal. I, I thought their man was going to have my back and, and hold me down and, 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 and send me some money. No one's sending him any money. This is the streets, bro. There's no love on the streets. I don't care how much you've been rolling with your best friend. Oh, he's my boy. He's rare, rare. There's no love on the streets. And we need to teach our kids that you've got to have decisions and be accountable for your own actions. You can only be judged and accountable for your actions. Don't sit there and be like, oh, I thought it was my bridge and I thought he was going to have my back. And oh, I only done it because I didn't want to be a snitch and all the rest of it. Yeah, yeah. This is what we teach them. We taught them back in the days, like if someone hits you, you hit them back. What are they doing now? If someone stabs you, you stab them back. We used to sit there and say, oh, the, um, the, the police are the snitches. The police are the ops. Police are the ops. What's going on now? No one don't want to talk to the police. That's snitching, man. That's snitching. Regardless whether it's snitching or not snitching, this is what we have taught. Words have power. So when young people are sitting there, they're looking at us like, well, yeah, there's a lot of us that's not involved in gangs. There's a lot of us that's trying to do great. But I'm damned if I do. I'm damned if I don't. So there's good kids right now. There's good kids that's in gangs. Because they're like, right, I might as well be in the gang because if I'm not in the gang, then other people are going to come into the area, think I'm in the gang and stab me. And then the gangs that's in that area, they're going to think that I'm a op because I don't want to be a part of them. And they're going to try and stab me too. So I'm damned if I do and I'm damned if I don't. So a lot of young people are just involved in gangs anyway for protection. Imagine that. They're protecting their own self because us as parents ain't looking into it. When they get a little bit old and they get to like 12, 13, 14, you're like, oh yeah, they're, they're adults now. You're saying, get out of my room, man. Get out of my room. He wants to go to school by himself. These are the times when you should be homing in. These are the times you should be looking at your child and be like, they're changing. They're acting different. Let me start understanding what are their thought processes. Asking them questions. Going through certain scenarios. What would you do in this situation? How do you feel about this? What do you feel about politics? What do you feel about law? Do you care about if people are getting stabbed? If they're coming off with, oh, I don't care, I don't know, then that's a big concern. That's a big concern to show you signs that your child's probably already been influenced. If you're saying to your child, what do you think about drugs and all the rest of it? And they're like, mom, man, why are you even talking about it? It's nothing, can it? Everyone does it. There's a concern because it's starting to realise that that reality now is actually true. It's not just for things that they've seen on TV. It's not just things that they're playing on the computer. They're acting it out now. And a lot of these young people are acting out more than actually we realise. And they're, they're so heavily endorsed into the social media, internet. Young boys are watching porn way before their time. Young boys are being seeing each other getting stabbed and being brutalised online. This is just natural now. 
So now you've got to ask yourself, what's my child like? What's my child's thought process like? Have I even sat down and spoke to him? What's his favourite colour? What does he like doing? And all of us can sit there and slightly say that we know, but we don't. We don't know how they think, and that's when they're starting to get into a young adult. That's when they're starting to build their self. That's when they're starting to feel like they're grown. So we need to make sure that we understand, and they understand consequences. They understand their actions. They understand about accountability. They understand about morals. They understand about respect and values. These are the kind of things that they, you should be ticking off your list when you're talking to them. Do you understand? Do you understand when you leave this house? Sometimes mommy can't defend you. Daddy can't defend you. You're on your own. So you've got to make sure you're acting accordingly. And sometimes kids are acting accordingly and they still get caught up in, uh, in collateral damage. So that's another thing where we're not supporting each other within the community, when we're not seeing certain things like, Joseph, are you, man? Come over here and if I'm doing something over here, bring everybody in and build up that community and build up that understanding or we're going to have a lot more boys that are being sent up to country, that are being groomed, that are not in school, not getting the right education, lack, lack of love, lack of self-love. And then you've got this whole battle of in a sense of how do we get them out of it? We can't get them out of it if we're the ones that are still preaching it. We can't get them out of it if we're like, oh, that's the way it was when I was growing up. We can't get them out of it if we're still saying, if someone hits you, you hit them back. We can't get out of it if we're still saying, police are the ops. We can't get out of it if we're saying, black lives matter, but we're stabbing each other. We can't get out of it when we're saying, we're suppressed, but at the same time, we're not getting onto the people that's suppressing us. It's many, 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 many things, guys, that we need to look at and say, you know what, let's adjust some things right now. But we don't want our kids getting more into gangs and being that victim and falling against the, 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 the wasteland because we didn't want to pick up the signs because we didn't want to see. What's you guys' thoughts? A little insight. Comment below.